Hello everybody, my name is James Elliott and I run Elliott Antique Clocks Limited and I also run the eBay shop, the Horology Centre. Today I'd like to show you this classic gorge case grand sonnery. Uh, it's by Drocco. What a lovely gorge case. Um, it's a, the real classic of this time. Um, the dial, absolutely excellent condition. There's not a scratch or a mark and there's no restoration. So that's really quite rare to see a dial in that condition. We've got the three-way lever um, at the base there for Grand Sonnery, Petite Sonnery, um, the serial number stamped on the case, the movement behind the dial. All the major, um, all the major parts, which is always nice to see. Now uh, that's the beauty of carriage clocks; they're so difficult for people to mess around with in terms of marrying things up um, because of the numbers they all sort of correspond. And it's uh, it's very difficult to marry a um, a carriage clock because of the the space is so confined to find the movement and the case that all fit together. Um, but the ones I have seen, they are out there. Um, they're not. You know, sort of been done well at all, so it's uh, it's very obvious. Um, this clock is in wonderful original condition. Here we can see the dial. Um, sorry, the movement. It's all been cleaned. Um, its original high polished finish has been restored, and we can see how well um, the details has survived. Um, on the um, sort of the hands and the, um, the Drocco stamp here, that's really really well preserved. You can see, you know, a lot of the detail that you uh, you don't normally see on ones that are really um, badly rubbed. The clock dates to about um, eighteen ninety. It's always a really nice sort of high quality clock from Drocco. It's a sort of mark of. Um, Mark of good quality. Um, the original moon hands, Roman numerals with the Arabic numerals on the outside. That was a later idea. Um, not something you really tend to see on earlier clocks. Clocks dating from this period around 1890, um, you'd always, you know, expect to see the outer markers, and I really like that. It sort of, really, you know, sort of makes the dial look that a little bit more complicated than just having the uh, Roman numerals by themselves. As you can see, the case is extremely well preserved. There's no marks or dinks or you know any nasty um, damage. You know, only you know light marks that one would expect to uh, to find on anything that's you know as old as this. But um, all glass panels are original, um, all except maybe the front glass. That's possibly a replacement. But all the others are that thick white glass um, with the really sharp bevel edges. So you normally find the modern replacements aren't aren't as sharp. They sort of have a more of a rounded sort of um, angle to them. So let's hear the clock strike. Those, tone, those gongs have a really nice tone to them. Here we see the strike side, um, which is um, obviously um, where the striking all comes from. Um, here we have the striking barrel, um, much, much bigger than the time side. Um, when we turn it around, we can uh, compare the size. It's about a third bigger, and it really has to be to cope with the Grand Sonnery, having the hours and the quarters. Um, with the Petite Sonnery, um, because it's just striking the quarters, um, other than the fact when you press the repeat button, but it's just striking the quarters and the hours. You normally find that the um, the strike barrel is pretty much to the same sort of size as the um, as the time side. So you know, look at the size of that. So let's turn the hands. Um, we can also uh, set the alarm. Always difficult from this position. So you see that love that lovely action. All the springs have been tensioned, and this is what you get from a fully overhauled clock, is a really um 
freshly working, well engaging piece. And just locate the hands. And there we are. I forgot to put some power on the alarm. I was wondering why that didn't go off. So let's set it at five at this time. I'll put some power on, then it will work. So back to the handset. As you can see, we're set on Grand Sonner at the moment. Well, I was a bit slow to react to that. I should have really turned it round so you could see the reaction. I believe I wound the clock a few days ago. So um, let's go up top and see how well the um, escapement is performing. So here we have the clock's original escapement. I never buy a clock with a, um, a modern replacement. It's just not worth it. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I want the collector to be happy. I want them to come back and buy more clocks from me. So what I buy, I make sure that um, I'm just buying the best quality and um, the, the, the clocks with the best original originality. Sorry, we can see the escapement is really pumping away. It's all been cleaned, uh, recalibrated, and it's been tested on a uh, timing machine. So, let's fully wind it. Actually, took a bit more than I uh, than I thought. Okay. So the case, um, as with all Drocos, is always very. Um, you know, he had a waterfall. Um, his cases, they're always very attractive. Really nicely proportioned. You can see the handle, it's nice and tight. As to is the door. Doesn't fall open. The clock is just really in absolutely fantastic condition. The clock measures 14 centimeters um, without the handle and with the handle it's 17.5 centimeters tall so really really fabulously made thing um, in excellent condition sounds wonderful um, keeps great time um, the, I've um, killed the case, uh, restored the movement, and the um, the uh, the work that I did on the escapement that I mentioned, um, restoring the uh, the original finish to all the parts, 
You can see that strike barrel, how well finished it is. Which is, a, you know, you're not going to really find um, this sort of work outside, um, you know, a good clock shop and they'll be charging uh, mega money um, for clocks like these because they really have to have them um, um, restored. Not all of them do um, because um, clock makers' prices have risen. Um, so some dealers are cutting certain corners um, and uh, not having their movements absolutely pristinely cleaned. And um, that, that's obvious by, the, by some of the pictures. Um, and yeah, I think this is really because of the price of, um, you know, clock makers have really risen over the years. And uh, so there's not many places you can still get a really nicely restored clock, um, and especially at the prices that I'm asking for. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on this wonderful Grand Sonnery. Um, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure to work on. Clocks by Drocco always are because of that extra quality that you get. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Bye for now.